Here it is. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Chemistry Basics by Doc Dean's Pools. I'm James, and today we're going to be talking to you about the chemical that most of you know what it is. We're going to be talking chlorine. We're going to cover the three most common types of chlorine that both homeowners and pool professionals alike both know how to use. What it does to your pool, the type of ranges that you're going to need, and how to maintain those ranges regardless of what type of chlorine that you're going to be using. Now each of these videos is going to be accompanied by a post on our website which is going to be kind of like a quick reference guide for all of you. So without further ado, I guess, let's get into it. When it comes to chlorine, there's generally three major types. You have liquid, you have granular, and you have tablet or pucks. There is chlorine gas, but we tend to not really use that these days. It's incredibly difficult to manage, and it's only really great on large-scale commercial applications. Liquid chlorine is the most common that people use. It's typically around 10 to 12% chlorine. Its scientific name is actually sodium hypochlorite, which is really just common bleach. The difference between bleach or chlorine for pools versus the Clorox that you may be getting in the grocery store is really just some labeling and marketing. Liquid chlorine can deteriorate over time. Like I said, it's between 10 and 12% active chlorine. The longer it sits, the less effective that chlorine becomes. So whenever you get chlorine, make sure to use it fairly quickly. You don't want it to be sitting around in your garage for any length of time. Pool professionals in particular, we tend to use jugs same day or within one day of getting it. We really never have chlorine sitting around and most of our suppliers get chlorine deliveries almost daily, if not multiple times each and every day. The second most common type of chlorine that you're gonna find is granular chlorine. One of the more common types is calcium hypochlorite or calhypo for short. And this is typically what people think of when they say the word shock. You know, when you buy those little baggies of shock that you throw in your pool, yeah, it's basically just calhypo for you. Now, granular chlorine can range usually anywhere between 35 and 65% active chlorine. Granular chlorine is really great if you need to store chlorine for a fairly long period of time. However, if you are storing granular chlorine, you must be incredibly careful not to allow whatever kind of container it's in to get wet. Commonly, pool professionals and pool stores will have buckets around 25 pounds that are just full of calhypo. Now, what chlorine will do and what calhypo will do if it gets wet, it oxidizes. It oxidizes so quickly that it stops fires. Every new pool tech gets told the story of the guy that left his bucket open on the back of his truck and then came out the next morning to half of his house scorched. You don't want to be this person. So if you do get any kind of dry chlorine, make sure to store it in a dry area with the lid on at all times. While we're talking about granular chlorine, I feel like it's a good time as well to talk about use in chlorine feeders. Now we just did a video on trichlor tabs and why we think they're so good. And then in that video, I mentioned about chlorine feeders. If you're putting a tab or a puck in there, they're fantastic but you do not want to put any kind of granular chlorine inside one of those traditional chlorine feeders. It's not uncommon for a lot of homeowners to take calhypo and instead of pouring it into the pool or diluting it in a bucket and putting it in like you're supposed to, they'll put it inside the chlorine feeder. Remember what we said about oxidation? That's gonna happen inside that tube, inside that cylinder that is your chlorine feeder. Now, along with the oxidation, you get a whole lot of heat and you get a whole lot of gas release. When you combine the heat with the gas release in a small container, you essentially get a mini explosive. <laughs> and the last thing I want anybody to do is to put something in their chlorine feeders that's gonna cause them to explode. Moving on now to one of the most common items sold in any pool store across the country is chlorine tablets and pucks. And we just did a video talking all about chlorine tabs and why I think they're good, why I think they're bad, some of the pros and cons, how to use them. So I won't delve into it too much. All you really need to know is that chlorine tabs sit at about 90 to 99% chlorine, depending on which type you get. And they're almost all stabilized with cyanuric acid. We'll be covering cyanuric acid in another video as part of this chemistry basic series. The really important thing to know about with these trichlor tabs is please, 
don't use those floating blue chlorinators or the ducts. If you want to find out why you should use a chlorine feeder and not one of those blue things or the ducts, click the link up here. So now that we know the three most common types of chlorine and we know a little bit about them, what exactly does chlorine do? Chlorine essentially sanitizes all of your water. It's there to kill pathogens and it's there to manage algae. Maintaining proper chlorine levels should prevent any kind of green or any kind of nastiness that may happen under normal use. Obviously, if we have severe and clement weather or you have just the most banging rager of all time, you may run into issues with green pools. So cool, we know a little bit about chlorine now. Let's really break it down and dig into the two types of ranges that you need to know for maintaining your pool. You're gonna have a maintenance level and you're gonna have a shocking level. This is what I was talking about when I said we were gonna get to shocking later. So when it comes to maintaining your pool, you wanna maintain chlorine levels between three and five parts per million for your standard everyday use. You should be able to maintain this with just once weekly dosing and once weekly monitoring. However, if you have a commercial account, such as a resort swimming pool, an apartment complex swimming pool, a theme park swimming pool, anything like that, those should be getting tested once a day, if not multiple times a day. If you are a property manager who is trying to manage a pool, and even if you have an outside company taking care of the chemical for you, you need to make sure that they're actually testing the levels because the last thing that you want is to have a stockpile of chemicals sitting in a fenced in yard because that is A, a safety hazard and B, a major waste of money. Because like we said before, chlorine does lose its efficacy over time. And one of the things that degrades chlorine faster than anything else out there is actually sunlight and ultraviolet light. If you're a homeowner, checking your pool's chemistry at least once a week is a great place to start and it's very easy to manage your chlorine levels at that rate. Okay, so that's maintenance level. Now we're gonna talk about the shocking level. And I've had this with a whole lot of people before where they say, oh, you need to put shock in my pool. You need to put shock in. It's like, shock isn't something that you put in. Shocking is actually a principle that we use in the pool industry. All shocking really is, is an extreme chlorination. If we're going by Taylor Technologies standards, Taylor are the manufacturers of all the test kits that pretty much all of us use. Their protocol for shocking a pool simply is raising the chlorine level 30 parts per million. The reason 30 parts per million is often used is because mustard or yellow algae, that can persist in up to 30 parts per million of chlorine. Now you can buy what's called shock from stores. It'll be in a bag. Many of you have probably done it. You'll go to the pool store, say my pool is green. They'll say, you need this, here's a bag of shock. You go, you put it in, and it takes care of it. It seems to do what it's doing. All that bag usually is, is calcium hypochlorite or trichlor. Now, it's sold this way because most pool professionals, such as myself, there is no need for us to get a single serving dose of calhypo. Much the same, there's no need for you, the homeowner, to get a 25 pound bucket and just have it sit in your garage for six months. You don't need to shock your pool or put shock in on a consistent basis, only if it's necessary. How though do we adjust to these ranges and make sure that we maintain appropriate levels? When I was talking about the types of chlorine earlier, you'll notice I said the percentage of chlorine in each of these compounds is because each one isn't only chlorine. There's other constituents in there to try and stabilize and balance the liquid 
or the solid to make sure it isn't volatile while it's in transit, as well as to give some added benefits like stabilizer. So liquids, it's about 10 to 12% active chlorine. Most granular chlorine is gonna sit between 35 and 65%, and most tabs will sit between 90 and 99. I'm gonna put up a graph here that shows you how to dose depending on the volume of your pool. And you can see on the left there, I have the percentages of the different types of chlorine, and then each of the columns is the size of your pool, and you can see how much of each different type of chemical that you're gonna need. 10 to 12% is liquid, 35 to 65% is granular, and then 90% is your tabs. Now you can feel free to go back and screenshot that guide if you would like to, but there is also gonna be a companion post on our website, docdeanspools.com, that you can use as a sort of quick reference guide for yourself so that you don't have to constantly go to this video and try and find what time I said what and find the guide. You can just go to the website, docdeanspools.com. It will be in the blog section. So yeah, just throwing in chlorine willy-nilly is a really great way to turn your blonde hair green or to bleach that new bathing suit you've got. So definitely take a look at the guidelines and try to stick to them and see if you can't lower your chlorine use. So that has been the Chemistry Basics episode all about chlorine. In our next one, we will be talking to you all about pH. Now, if you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This was James with Doc Dean's Pools. I'll catch you guys in the next one.